You've waited a lifetime to look better and feel better, and now here's your chance. Fitness Friday on WNDB. Call 239-0033 and have your questions answered on health, fitness, and a better life. Fitness Friday is brought to you by Bodies by Tasso and Company, 1140 West Granada Boulevard in Ormond Beach. And now, here's your host, Tasso Kiriakis. Welcome to Fitness Friday. Well, Dave, I'm sort of solo for a while. Hopefully, we will have Miranda calling in from Love Whole Foods. As we know, uh, we know that uh, Mitch is up north in uh, Detroit with the family. They will a family. A wedding going, or something. Wedding on, going on. So, uh, yeah. thankfully for him, he's got a good time going on up there. And it's Fitness Friday. It's brought to you by Bodies by Tasso and Company with our two great co-hosts that we have. Uh, the co-sponsors of it is number one is of course Love Whole Foods with uh, Mitch Booth and his great staff in two locations in uh, in Port Orange and Ormond Beach, and then Dr. Lorenzo Fon, who act- actually Dr. Lorenzo Fon is leaving today for another seminar that he's really? going to. As you know, Dr. Fon is uh, constantly re-educating. Yeah, they keep updating uh, ancient <clears throat> medicine. Well, you know, he goes he goes <laughs> these techniques. He goes to learn more techniques, and that is what he goes for. And you know, you got I, I really respect when you see that. Um, people in their profession continuously go and update their knowledge, yeah, you know, sure. and and I think that's a key that you'll find between Mitch, myself, you know, um, we'll we'll be with a lifestyle academy next week because uh, mm-hmm. it'll be pre-recorded because I will be in um, I will be in, in uh, Utah at a holistic medicine conference that I'm going to go to, and you know, I go a couple times a year to these major conferences to to continue just to be educated. And Mitch does that when it comes to nutrition. And, and one of the things that I think Mitch does very well is, as we'll hear about when Miranda calls in, he constantly has educational seminars. There's, there's, there's three great ones already scheduled. You know, he's got an August, August September, and uh, an October one already scheduled. I believe it's September, October. Dr. Michael Murray is coming. We'll find out again from, uh, from Miranda in a moment sure. when she calls in. Uh, but it's it's great. But you know, and and to this to this fact and and uh, and what we are doing, I, I want to talk about turning back your genetic clock. It's it's talking about a real anti aging solution. Let me talk about how I got to this point of this becoming besides aging, because you know as we all age, we begin to all be concerned about, hey, what am I, um, you know, how am I going to um, preserve my youth? So you know, we 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 start to be very very concerned about that. So what we need to do is we need to look at it from a standpoint. Here's how I got to this. You know, the history of bodies is basically this. Bodies, you know, I spent the the good part of my young life in the fitness industry at a place called Omega 40, which is mm-hmm. now called Elite Fitness on Granada. It's been like three or four different places. Right. And and I spent a good part of my youth uh, in this industry at that. Um, when I say youth, I was 23, 24 years old. It was after I got my master's degree in, in biochemistry. And so I, I went, to, I went uh, there and I... I worked for my brother and, and worked and, you know, somewhere along the course in about 1986, uh, you know, I had a lot of members asking, saying, hey, listen, I need to lose 10, 15 pounds of fat and uh, or, or weight, you know. Um, and so and you know, at that time, we didn't distinguish fat from weight. We just, I want to lose 10 or 15 pounds. And so what we uh, what I did was I called Ellington Darden, who we all know from Nautilus Sports Medicine, has been uh, on this show several times and is a great contributor to the fitness world with his books and that. I think it's up to about 50 books that he's written. But Ellington, I said, Ellington, I said, do you have a program that teaches people how to eat? And, and Darden did what I think is still one of the landmark books of, of what, by the way that he put the book together, not so much by the book, you know. The book he put together was a complete solution. It had an exercise protocol in it that you followed. It was called the Nautilus Diet, mm-hmm. in case any of you have ever seen it. It gave you the exercise to do on a week-by-week basis, adding machines as you went so it accommodated you seeking your level. Then what happened is is uh, he told you what to eat, and then he told you after what to eat, he told you how to cook it, and then after how to cook it, he told you, well, here, here's your shopping list for mm-hmm. it. So he gave you a very complete plan, and yeah. we took that plan, and we followed that plan, and we were very successful with it. Basically, you walked in the door, and we handed you a book, and you ate the way it said. The problem with that was, with, well, two problems I see in the evolution of society is, number one, we don't like to be told what to eat these days. Yeah. You know, we like to sort of like, hey, listen, I got my schedule, I got my thing, you don't understand, I got to run and go, right? So that's the first part of it. The second part of it is, is that um, we we see we see that um, um, what's the word I want to say? We see that um, p 
people aren't going to stay to that structured of a program of weighing and measuring. Yeah. And um, and so the people keep their weight off for a period of time, but in a year they they regain it. And because they had good exercise habits, they were a little bit better than the ninety five percent of people that lose weight that regain weight. So we we began at that time a trek in in nineteen eighty eight eighty nine to try and discover a way to make the success of this Nautilus diet and the completeness of the program of good diet and, and, and good exercise habits come together. And we, we took it, we, we began to look and, uh, and develop programs. And we, we've had some nice programs that were nice six or 10 week programs for, that we ran there and they were successful and again, but they let, they, our percentages got better, but they didn't have that lifestyle attachment to it that, mm-hmm. that changed people's total perspective of how they ate in life. Mm-hmm. and. You know, we, we knew by then there was a lot more psychologically to, to getting people to change their habits and that. So we began to, in, in 1999, we began to develop a program which became known as the Healthy Inspirations Program. And Healthy Inspirations was a longtime sponsor of this program. Sure. The reason we don't have Healthy Inspirations anymore is because corporately they took a different direction that we were not real inclined to stay with. But in the in the experience of, of Healthy Inspirations, which if you loved Healthy Inspirations, we still have it existing as as uh, take it off is our program we work with now um, but with with the healthy inspirations program we we um, we learned an awful lot we had over 800 women go through that program and you know we would have a, a large percentage of those women that would get stuck after losing a certain amount of weight and they couldn't go any further and you know of course you'd say well you're not doing the diet right or the, and and you would you would know that some of these people were just very ardent that they were doing it right uh, those women happened to be in that late 40s early 50s kind of thing so you now start looking at this condition called menopause and to this day i remember the conversation with bonnie newell it, when i was about 45 she walked up to me she says she says do you know what menopause is and i said uh yeah i said i, I think i do I, I think i know what menopause is right. and um and she says uh well you better learn because uh because the um you know, your friends are turning 50 and their wives are going to be turning 50 and they're not going to let their husbands come out to play with you if you don't know what it is. So I started to study, you know, uh, menopause. And as we studied menopause, we began to discover an awful lot. Well, there was a point in, in studying this menopause that what I did was uh, I began to look, at, look for the anti-aging solutions that were out there, which were these anti-aging clinics down in West Palm and Jacksonville and went up into St. Simons, Georgia and, and looked at a lot of different places. And what I found was they were all, they were, and I'm not saying these things are bad, I'm just saying they were all programs that were basically, um, you take a needle of HGH or a certain hormone balance and you know they did these tests on you. And you know, for the, for the common person, for the regular person out there, right. It wasn't a solution because at the, the 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 bare minimum they were six seven hundred dollars a month is what those those procedures were costing people plus the testing they had to go through, so it wasn't a very economical and I didn't think it was a very reasonable solution. Then we see the advent of we have a lot of replacement creams, which the science behind that is it you know it it, it seems to me that it rolls in, in several different directions and we have the hormone replacement therapy, so you start to look at it and you go like man there has to be a better solution. So several years go really began to work on this what's the real anti-aging solution and of course we want to put it into a situation that for anti-aging we want to put it in the simplicity of what we can do every day so of course being in my industry what have we tied it into we've tied it into three-step process your diet your exercise and your supplementation and that's what we've put together from that standpoint of the program. And from the diet, the standpoint of the diet is a very simple procedure. It's the elimination of sugar due to the impact of glucose levels and the hormones effects like um, insulin, glucagon, and leptin. Now, all of us have heard of insulin, but a lot of people haven't heard of glucagon and leptin. But what they are, leptin basically turns on and off your appetite the, so that you know when you're fulfilled and helps with the fat burning. And glucagon is what's respo- is, is the antagonist, basically, to insulin. And insulin, uh, glucagon helps with the, with the, uh, the burning or st- uh, burning of fat, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. So, so the, the insulin is what, you know, it's, it's phosphorus, it stores the fat and uh, stores the sugar as fat, so that's what makes you fatter. Second thing is we want to increase healthy fats in our diet. And 
we're going to talk about supplementation for that, but there's a way of doing that. You know, we've been sold a bill of goods that tells us that we should be eating low fat. One of the biggest things that, that I hate seeing occur is that we took this great healthy product that was in the, in the markets of, of Greek yogurt made from 4% milk fat, and we now see all you can do is find 0%. Well, they've added back in the very same things. You have that to call that Greek American yogurt. Now, yeah. That's called, they call it no fat. <laughs> Let me tell you, if you're buying Greek yogurt, do yourself a favor. Don't buy the zero fat stuff. Buy the real fat stuff. It tastes better, number one. And number two, it's much healthier for you. All the health benefits come from that. Years ago, we were, you were on the program. I said, uh, Tasso, do they make a fat free feta cheese? And you said, why? Why <laughs> would you? you know? Remember that? And they do, they do they but do. why? Uh, why would you uh, want it? Why would you want uh, to put this? And the thing is, increasing your consumption of uh, antioxidant rich foods such as berries, which we'll talk about in a minute. But while we've, we've got the time, and I know she's very busy at the store. Let's ask Miranda from Love Whole Foods to come on the air with us. Miranda, how are you today? Oh, I am excellent. How are you doing today, Tasso? Good. And this is your first soiree into being on the radio show with us. It certainly is. Long-time listener, though. Thank you. Well, we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit. You know, my three-step process in this is, of course, diet, which we're going to talk, which we overlap very well with together in our, in, in our businesses, and exercise, which is more my deal kind of thing, but supplementation, which is Love Whole Foods. First, before we go, uh, I promised people that there are some seminars going on at Love Whole Foods. So let's tell everybody where Love Whole Foods is located, how to get there, how to get in touch with you guys, and also let's briefly go over these, these uh, seminars you have coming. Oh, absolutely. Um, first of all, we have two store locations. Uh, we have one in Ormond Beach on Williamson Boulevard. We're over by the Regal Movie Theater. Very easy to find, a freestanding building. Um, telephone number, you can reach us anytime Monday through Sunday. It's 677-5236. And our other store location is in Port Orange on Taylor Road. It is across the street from the Coles. Also very easy to find in a shopping center. And... Looks like we've got a lot of seminars coming up, actually. Um, next month, we have, um, let's see, Aligned Integrative Health coming. Um, they will be talking about the connection between diabetes and heart disease, which, um, of course, is incredibly prevalent. Uh, about 65% of the people with diabetes do die from heart disease, which is incredibly unfortunate. Um, but this will be a Thursday night lecture, August 29th, uh, from 7 to 9 here at the store in Ormond Beach, and anyone is welcome, and you can call to sign up. Again, the number is 677-5236. And then sometime in September, I believe we will have um, lovely Leslie Patterson coming in talking about the importance of turmeric and iodine. Um, that should also be a Thursday, the 19th. And then in October, um, this will be a big deal, we have Dr. Michael Murray uh, from Natural Factors coming. Um, that'll be October 3rd, also a Thursday, and that'll be at uh, Calvary Christian Church. And, and uh, give a, ba a background very quickly on Dr. Michael Murray, because I, I don't think enough people know who he is, and Mitch, Mitch is just really, I think, uh, Mitch is like a little kid for this, for this seminar. <laughs> you know, he's, he's, he's very excited about it. Oh, yes. Um, I mean, uh, Dr. Dr. Michael Murray, uh, he has an array of products out. Um, you know, everything ranging from multivitamins to omega-3 fish oils to um, antioxidants, like some of the ones we'll be talking about today. Um, but um, he is just extremely knowledgeable. The, the line of products that he puts out is, um, is amazing. Um, and he's also launching a new book. It'll be on cholesterol and heart health. And I know that's something that he'll be talking about at the lecture. Well, we want to talk about supplementation with anti-aging. And I've put this in sort of a three-step process. And we're sort of jumping to the what should be the end of my presentation but because I got you guys that are the experts and offer the products let, let's talk about that the three steps within this this component of supplementation are to decrease cellular inflammation to change gene expression and to have true cellular detox and we, we hear an awful lot about detox and I'm one of these guys that believes that detox comes from an overall basis of how you eat and your eating habits and getting some of the inflammatory foods out of it uh, from that standpoint we can talk more about that but let's talk a little bit about you know something I, I, I like to talk about during the process of the eating of, of, of good diet and we can sort of bring some of that in but you know inflammation is epidemic in this country we Mitch and I are big proponents of that and the antioxidants that we get they turn off the bad genes 
that we have that can express it because people don't realize that we have genes and we can express the bad genes or the good genes for a certain trait and antioxidants could turn those genes off but the body has it produces the the strongest antioxidant which is called glutathione it, its initials are ghs and berries raise that amount that you have so we're sort of hitting the third component of of addressing that diet part which is to get more berries and in, in that the cell dies without glutathione because it's, it's such a, a strong part. So one of the first things is you must have a supplement to raise this glutathione in, in the body. And you can't take it directly because it won't get into the cell. So you need high levels of things like uh, resveterol to create that effect so you can create more, more crea um, of simulation of glutathione. Talk a little bit about, because you guys have a store brand of, of resveterol. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And it's actually one of our um, best-selling resveratrol formulas. Um, but uh, the good thing about this product, it is um, of the best sourcing. Um, your resveratrol comes from your Japanese knotwood. Um, it also comes from the skin of red grapes, um, which this supplement um, actually uses both. And it also has a blend of grapeseed extract, another good uh, antioxidant for um, cardiovascular health in, in particular. Um, but yes, this product is an everyday low value, 10% off, uh, is one of our best selling. Um, and it does relate uh, directly to glutathione. Um, and another one of my, my favorites that does assist the, the glutathione and, and boost the levels in the tissues is your NAC, which is your N-acetylcysteine. Um, it is a naturally occurring amino acid and it, it does boost those levels. Um, I would have to say that's probably another one of my favorite antioxidants specifically for glutathione. Okay, and, and, and we, we want to take enough supplements. The other one I want to talk about from, this, from a direct supplementation is I think we're getting to where we talk so much about omega-3s, we're actually getting a little omega-3 dominant in, in what people take, and there's a danger to that in, in that you really <clears throat> you affect the, the liquidity of that cell membrane with too much omega-3. So give us some examples of, in, in this formula, om having enough omega-3s, 6s, and 9s in balance. And there is a natural balance in the cell wall and the cell membrane of that. Tell us, tell us some good supplements that will bring the omega-3s, 6s, and 9s into the body, bring them in good balance, utilizable in that that we can look at from the standpoint of loves. Oh, absolutely. Um, well, first of all, it really depends on how much you get in your diet. Uh, the majority um, of the world today does not get enough omega-3. Uh, we do not eat enough um, fatty fish. Uh, we definitely don't eat enough um, flaxseed. We don't eat enough walnut oil or eggs. Most of um, society today just um, that does not eat enough good fatty omega-3s. Uh, however, 6 and 9 are a little bit more prevalent in the diet. Um, Omega-6 you can get from a lot of different vegetable oils um, such as sunflower or sesame, uh, grapeseed. You can also get it from avocados and nuts and um, also supplements such as um, borage oil or evening primrose oil. And, of course, you can also get it from, from eggs and from animal meat, what have you. Um, and uh, the same thing with omega-9. I, I think avocado is one of the highest there. Right. And omega-9 um, also olive oil. So with that being said, um, if you're eating a lot of those types of foods and oils, you are getting a decent amount of 6 and 9. Most people just need to supplement with an omega-3. Um, however, that's not always the case. Uh, in our store, we do have products that are catered towards um, quite a few different individuals. We have three 6 and 9 blends, um, which for the most part are going to be blends of fish oil, of flax oil, and of borage oil. Um, we have it in our store label, which, again, every day, 10% low value. Uh, we love that. And we do have a number of omega-3s, um, always have something on sale. I know a lot of our customers prefer to take a high amount of omega-3, particularly for that high amount of EPA and DHA. Um, we have um, a couple different products that are very, very high in both, um, actually one of which you can um, get away with just taking one a day, which is great. Um, but that's kind of how that, that ratio falls. It's like a, a 1 to 2 to 1 to 4 ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 and 9. And that does tend to be the standard. Well, you know, a lot of people are probably a little uh, uh, question mark in their head after I, I made the comment about changing gene expression. 
and and this is really a new epigenealogy epige- is a, a completely new study field since about 1995 when they had the the genome project that they did and it's a very hot one in in, in disease and, and aging and you know this Absolutely. whole thing this whole thing of of of, of anti-aging to me is is something that you know, I look at it and I say, man, I, I want to age slowly. I want to be able to look youthful, be youthful, and, and that type of thing. So, <clears throat> we, you know, Time Magazine said your DNA, there's an article, I think it's about two years old, and I said your DNA is not your destiny. Do you remember that article? Do you remember ever seeing that? Uh, yes, yes, I do. And in that, and in that, and in that what they did is they, they did a, a, a project where they had uh, mice, twin, twin mice, and they took the one set of twins and they fed them um, BPA, which is a horrible free radical. <clears throat> it, it exists in, in uh, plastic bottles. So it, what's give, it's basically the most common thing we see it in is it gives plastic bottles their, their uh, softness. And so um, they fed BPA to one group of them. And what happened was <clears throat> they, they got really overweight. It turned on their obesity gene. Uh, the, it, it made it made it so that they uh, their skin got horrible light. They lost they lost uh, fur that type of thing, and then <clears throat> they they started to give antioxidants and that to the 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 mice that had been given the BP high levels of BPA. And guess what? It began to reverse it. And and they talked about methylation uh, being present, so that the, so that the cells would start to reverse and come back and fight this this uh, this free radical exposure. And and this this aspect of it comes through supplementation. And again, we come back to uh, re- and I always Dr. Jamie is trying to teach me how to say I always come back. This Revestorol is a tremendous part of this product, uh, or part of this process of reversing that that process. Would you agree with that? Um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, and on the the topic of, of free radicals. Um and, and basically, it's just a highly reactive atom, and it destroys body tissues. Um, every atom, their are electro- uh, electrons, they usually come in pairs. And sometimes one will get stripped away, which then it becomes a free radical, and then it gets frantic because it's trying to search for another electron to grab onto. So, unfortunately, by stealing the electrons, free radicals destroy those other molecules. Um, and then that's kind of how a lot of the antioxidants work. Um, that they go in and, and they're going to replenish that so it does not happen. Um, and, you know, un- unfortunately, um, by damaging the, the cell structures, in- including DNA, um, which, you know, that's basically what contributes to, to cellular aging, um, you know, that contributes to all different diseases, heart disease, cancer, um, you know, the list goes on and on. Um, and I think that's uh, why... Uh, supplementing with antioxidants is just um, so important, and especially full spectrum protection, because um, each antioxidant, of course, is going to have a, a different uh, range of activity. So it's good to get that variety in your diet. So you know, like you said, eating lots of different berries, taking products like um, resveratrol um, or alpha lipoic acid, uh, another very good and important uh, antioxidant, often been referred to as the perfect antioxidant. Um, just um, because it it's basically water and fat soluble so right. it works both inside and outside of the cell so like I said it, it's good to get that full spectrum um, uh, and, and definitely uh, it's good to get it from the diet and, and, the, and the other part about this is, is you know um, the free radicals people go how do I get exposed to free radicals free radicals arise as a result of stress they reside they rise as a result of sitting in sitting in the, the studio I'm sitting in now with fluorescent lights <laughs> bang because that's what what yeah. is fluorescent lights it's an excitation of of electrons and uh, to a higher state as they come down they give off this energy which is light and that's how that's how we light up uh, uh, rooms and and those free radicals run around as you said very well they run around looking to to give up that extra electron they've got on the that that they've got on the outside because it gets them too excited when they want to be stable in other words oxygen whenever we see oxygen we see oxygen is O2 well why is oxygen O2 is because it has seven electrons on the outside of on the outside shell so it can share that electron it can stabilize itself as O2 and we know that for hydrogen and helium and chlorine and things of that nature so we're we're constantly exposed to free radicals plus the processes of the body 
yield to that and give us give us that now let's talk about one other part of this the third part is true detox and let's talk about detox from the standpoint of um, uh, products that you have at Love Whole Foods oh goodness well <laughs> we definitely have quite a few and there's all different means of, of detoxing um, but I guess on the particular topic of um, of anti-aging I, I would focus on the liver uh, it is the main filtering organ of the body. Everything passes through the liver. Uh, so it's definitely something that you want working properly. Um, and, of course, there are a number of things that are, are good for the liver. Um, there's your, your milk thistle. It's probably your, your number one uh, liver filtering herb. Um, you also have your dandelion. Um, I mean, really, the, the list goes on for there. Um, but um, omega-3s have, have shown to, to play a part in that as well. I know we were talking about that for a while. Mm -hmm. And and again, I, I again I like detoxification from a from a you know I use a product that that uh, that Mitch knows about called whey water. I use that for it. coconut water. Also presents an awful lot of help to that. But yes. but the the other aspect of it that from the standpoint of detoxification, I look at it from a whole diet standpoint and getting getting things like the grains out of your diet, the processed grains, and getting very basic in your eating and with high fiber. Because too many people go to they hear about cleansing or detox, and they go and they put cayenne pepper solutions in, and 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 unfortunately, fasting and detox and that has become a weight loss solution for a lot of people, and and the only way that I find um, that fasting and and detox should be part of a weight loss solution, quite frankly, is when you have people that really have their they need their body sort of cleansed so it can function and balance back and and you can't do crazy things with it and and for some people they just they buy into about anything so th those aspects of it i think are very important to push to people that you know from the standpoint of the liver i think milk thistle is tremendous it's like you know uh, and and the liver can actually regenerate some of its cells so it's something that we uh very few of the organs in the body can do so we want to make sure that that we we look at the supplements. We buy quality supplements. I heard a, a, one of the first mentors I had in supplementation was a guy named Dan Miller, who was a um, he, uh, he was actually a, a dentist from um, from uh, Houston, Texas, and the guy was just flat on this basic basic nutrition from the standpoint of supplementation. He said the reason supplementation doesn't work for people is really two or three reasons. Number one, they don't buy a quality supplement. Um, then once they have a quality supplement, they don't take that supplement for a long enough period of time for it to affect the body positively. And the third, true. and the third reason is they don't take enough supplementation. Like people are going to go to, people are going to go to, um, um, to Walmart. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to, 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 you know, to, to, to bust someone like that, but they're going to go to Walmart and they're going to buy a, you know, say, oh, here's that anti-aging revestorol I heard them talking about today. And, and they're going to buy it. But you know what? Really, it doesn't have enough of a count to it. It doesn't have enough potency to it to cause things. And just because vitamins have, like they, you buy these vitamins, they, say they have 100,000 times the amount of B that you need. Well, all they've done is they've put in the Bs that are really cheap in there. And, and they sell you based on that fact. You want a nice balance of the supplements, and you want enough potency that affects. So you've got to take enough of it. You've got to take it long enough. You've got to take a good enough supplement. And that's why we've teamed with Love Whole Foods and and uh, because that's what you offer is quality in your facilities oh absolutely and then as mitch says quite often you know um, it, it really is about the food it's about what you put in your body and we are a whole food store um you know back to the detoxification topic um it all boils down to digestion um, if you are eating foods that are not found in nature, that are hard to digest, your body is working into overtime, and that can throw off so many different processes. Um, so by getting, you know, intaking uh, good, nutritious foods, your body is able to digest it, is digesting it properly. Everything is functioning the way you want it to, and you usually just feel good. Well, Miranda, let's come back to that now. Let's, that, that was the number one thing on my list, and and I wanted to make sure we got the supplementation out because I want I want Mitch to be happy that that we uh, <laughs> we expose things. But let's talk about diet because you know let's talk about two very specific parts. There's three there's three little secrets we have in, under the diet phase, and that is the elimination of sugar due to its impact on glucose levels and hormones. The glucose affects every um, every hormone that affects aging. Okay, they're all affected by it. 
And here's the first, here's the first one. Here's the one that when you look in the mirror and you think you're aging, here's your first one. It is called glycation. Okay? When you look in the mirror and you see age spots, that's a result of glycation. Because what happens is, is that um, there are visible evidence where sugar combines with the protein and affects the hormones, and that's why these spots begin to appear. Okay? And we affect the ATP of the body which is the gasoline of the cell as a result of that process. So that's why we start to see our energy levels dropping. And that. So we want to avoid and eliminate sugar. Second thing is sugar causes cell membrane to get inflamed. And, and you can't get, you know, if you inflame the cell membrane, you can't get toxins out of the cell and you can't get food into the cell. Okay, and, and, given, and given the process that the, the body has inflammation, the cell has inflammation, the, if it can't function, it can't do those two processes, good stuff in and bad stuff out, the cell becomes sick. And if the cell becomes sick, it has two choices. It can die or it can mutate. Mutation is cancer. So that's why we talked a lot about epige epigenetics and, and the toxins and getting them out because and detoxification is such an important part of that. Now let's talk about elimination of sugar. You know, I, I came and I bought flour from you guys to make homemade bread. Okay, and we talk about we don't want to have flour, we don't have grains, we don't want to have we don't we don't want to have the um, the processed sugars. And like like Mitch says uh, said on the show, if it comes from a plant, eat it. If it's made in a plant, don't eat it. <laughs> you know, kind of <laughs> yeah. thing. So let's let's talk about getting the sugar out of that because we have so much so many products where sugar is hidden to us. Let's talk about eliminating sugar. Um, sure. Um, my general rule of thumb is just cut out the processed foods. Uh, that makes it nice and easy. Um, if you're eating whole foods, you know what you're eating. Uh, if you're eating something out of a package, of course, it, it gets kind of scary. Half the times you don't even know how to pronounce the things that are in the product. Um, so uh, really, that's the, the simplest way to do it. Um, anything processed, just kick it. Uh, a lot of raw foods or, or lightly steamed um, vegetables. Uh, juicing is an excellent way. Um, but um, the, the processed foods, that's just the, the easiest way to do it. Anything white, refined sugar, refined flours, um, just toss it out the window. Right. And, and usually if you look at that label, if it ends in an OSE, it's a sugar. Yeah. Now, you have corn syrup. You have fr high fructose corn syrup. You've got to watch out for those things. But, you know, and, and we see that they're, they're found in, in fruit juices. You know, when you see this only yeah. 10%. Listen, if you're not squeezing your juices, you're getting, you're getting too much sugar probably. That, because, that is absolutely correct. Be because, you know, at least when you squeeze your sugar, you may uh, squeeze your fruit. You may not like it, but you're getting some, some, some pulp in there. Yeah, live getting, enzymes. You're getting the live enzymes. You're getting the fruit. Uh, you're getting the, the fiber and that. So those are important from that standpoint to make sure. If we're drinking fruit, we have so many kids. You know, my 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 daughter, my middle daughter. You know, she she went around for five years wanting her two front teeth because when she was little, we made the mistake, silly us. We were we were giving her apple juice to suck on at night, and what that do? It decayed the heck out of her front teeth at a premature age, and and so you know we learned we learned the hard way. You know, from that aspect of it. So the sugars are just hidden in a lot of the foods. We need to be uh, 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 um, very conscious of it and make sure that we're working from that standpoint. Now, the second part is to increase healthy fats. And this is where we've been sold a really bad bill of goods. Because, you know, I was, I was, talk and I was talking to a doctor last week, and I told him, I, I was telling him about some grass-fed beef I'd had. And he goes, and he says, well, my, my cardiologist says meat is bad for me. And I said, well, I don't think that was it really said it was bad for you because then i'd have to take sort of an issue maybe too much beef is bad for you or or if you're too inactive but but the the aspect of grass-fed beef to me and, and and a lot of people we talked about on the show so we also need to clarify to people if at love whole foods they can get uh grass-fed or range-free chicken there as well but the, the grass-fed beef is so much higher in things like cla and creatine you know kids are coming to me go should i take this creatine someone I said no tell your mom to go to go to love whole foods and buy grass-fed beef and and have make make your make your steaks with that you'll get more creatine than you'll waste in the supplement and it'll get into your body because the greater b complexes and the cla will lean you out and increase lean body tissue talk about those kind of products at love Oh, absolutely, um, and, that, and that's definitely the way to do it, too. Um, I really do feel like you should be getting what you need from food, um, and of course, um, nutritional supplements are just that. They are supplements, um, but um, with the natural organic meats, um, you just kind of get that, that synergy effect of having the whole food. 
um, you're going to get that amino acid profile that you want, that um, exact uh, protein content that you want. Um, and not only that, you know, back on to, you know, the free range and the grass-fed, um, you know, if, if you're going to eat an animal, you want to eat an animal who's been fed good things. You want to eat a healthy animal. Uh, you don't want to eat something that's been pumped full of hormones, that's been um, eating an atrocious diet um, and a diet, you know, of herbicides and pesticides. Um, so I think it just kind of makes sense. It's a no-brainer. You know, you want to eat animals that were eating good things. And, and let's go back to that. Cows produce our meat, right? They produce our beef. And we cows were not intended to eat corn and, and grain. They were intended to eat grass. That grass carries with it great nutrition, great probiotics that come through the, the products like the milk, you know, the yogurts and things that we get, the cheeses that we get when they are raw cheeses and their light pasteurization and, and that type of thing. And there's certain farms in this area that, that you can go to and you get raw milk at if you want to get it straight off the farm, but you can get products like that from, from, um, from love whole foods but the thing the thing about it is that when <clears throat> when you're when you're going and you're doing this and, and you're eating better in that you you have to be conscious of this because they're going to taste better first of all and yeah. and a lot of people will say well the eating organic or eating raw or eating alive those foods are those foods are more expensive but here's what i've noticed about it you're you're you have greater satiation you you you're satisfied much earlier and i've heard this from all the people that have begun to take the beyond organic products with me or they've switched over to buying from love whole foods as you go more natural you feel a greater satiation and and when you eat more it's like your body metabolizes better it's like the energy comes and you know the fact of that so many people go oh my energy's run down if and i ask them what they're eating or skipping meals as if if you're not eating food food is energy Food is energy. If you don't eat, you're going to be, at, and, and that's why the importance of exercising is to convert that energy, that, that food into energy. So that aspect of it is the biggest part about this increasing healthy fats is that it provides the building blocks to heal the cell membrane. The, you know, we, we talked a little bit about receptor sites in the past, and so, but all these things float on what's called a phospholipid raft, not to get too complicated, but this, it's just the way it's embedded into the cell membrane. And this is what transports and indicates and gets stuff across and, and, and nourishes the cell. And the thing about it is, is that when if the, the fats are the bricks that build the cell, they build the cell membrane. And that's why healthy fats are so important. So let's go to the final one, which is to talk about getting more antioxidants and the big one is getting the blueberries you know making shakes with blueberries and things like that but let's talk about getting antioxidants into the program and, and that and before i go let me just let me just hit real quick my list i had real quick of uh healthy fats raw nuts seeds almonds cashews flax hemp pecan seeds pine nuts macadamia sunflower sesame um walnuts i said already grass-fed beef cod liver oil olive oil olives, grape seed oil, avocados, grape seed oil, vinegar, uh, coconut milk, and, and spreads made from it, full fat, plain yogurt, cashew butter, canned sardines, coconut, uh, coconut or coconut flakes, hemp oil that has a three to one ratio, flaxseed oil, almond butter, regular butter folks, not margarine, raw cheeses, and eggs. All those are really good from that standpoint. And we want to stay from, away from the hydrogenated type of fats. Now let's talk about consumption of berries and and what how our cell needs them to protect the the the, the dna oh well absolutely um well i know as far as the fats go um you can definitely by cutting out anything that's been fried or um has an added um added nitrates uh particularly your meats like your smoked or your cured meats um, that's going to make a huge difference cutting those out. Um, once your cells are healthy, it's a little bit easier to uh, get those antioxidants to basically work properly um, uh, to boost what you need. Um, smoothies is really one of the most popular ways to, to get the berries. Um, again, you want to drink it fresh. You want those live, en live enzymes. You want it to work um, basically the same way it would as if you ate it, except it's easier to digest, of course, once it's all broken up. Um, blueberries, um, very delicious. Um, we've got them in several of our smoothies in the store. Uh, a lot of customers um, prefer uh, things with blueberries. Uh, we also have blackberries, raspberries. 
Um, that there's just a whole list of berries right. that are, are super high in antioxidants. A and again, they turn off the big thing is this epigenetics. I'm not going to get into it in this show. I, I need a whole show to get into epigenetics and talk about the cell membrane and things like that. And people will probably turn off the radio going, I have no idea. I don't want to know any kind of, you know, it's like the guy that goes, the football player that comes to the thing and Coach asks him, he says, he says, Matt, I was told there would be no math required. You know, it's just like, but, but we, this is why we're different. And, you know, where do you hear personal trainers talking about this stuff? They tell you to eat leaner and all that kind of stuff. But we study the science of this to make it more efficient. You're going to see that when I get into the exercise component of this. But, but I want to, I want to reemphasize the berries, the antioxidants that come in, they turn off the bad genes. All of us have a gene for obesity, and all of us have a gene for leanness. We we turn on that 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 bad gene as we raise sugar levels. Okay, as we get the the trans fats in our body. So we we want to keep our body to where it can produce this antioxidant called glutathione that I told you about. That is a huge antioxidant for protecting the body from the the free radicals of that. So that's that's the process of why we have the berry so much. So if I were to give you five big foods, see if you agree with my five food lists, and then we're going to get to Jim because Jim has a question, and then after that I'm going to come back and talk about exercise. And grass-fed meats, not grain-fed meats, okay, grass-fed meats, raw dairy from grass-fed cows, avocados, walnuts, and berries. So, and most research applies to blueberries. You know, we hear a lot about the acai berries, but really mm -hmm. most of the research is given to all these berries and all the wonder stuff is blueberry research, quite frankly. Agree with those top five for that? Um, yeah, for the most part, I definitely agree, and I love that you throw in the raw, because um, that's uh, definitely important, especially with the dairies. Uh, once you process them, um, you know, it, it completely changes the, the structure, and, and you don't get the health benefits. Um, you know, and, and also back to the, the topic of um, the, the antioxidant fruits, a lot of people don't realize that by getting the antioxidants from those fruits, you're also extending the biochemical life of other antioxidants that are normally in your body anyway that you get from other foods and those fruits like vitamin C and vitamin E. Um, and sometimes it's very important to um, extend the life of those, those other vitamins and other nutrients. Um, and the antioxidants, they do that. All right. Well, um, Miranda, before we go and before I let you go, because I got a feeling that Jim will be on that topic here and, and we'll need your expertise. Uh, let's tell him one more time the two locations, Love Whole Foods and the two seminar, the three seminars that are coming up in August, September. And we're going to get prepared for that. Let's bring Jim in for a minute. Uh, so, hey, Jim, welcome to the show. Hey, uh, I just wanted to give a little notice. The EPA, when you mentioned herbicides in the beef, uh, the EPA just changed the allowable levels on glyphosate or Roundup. In other words, the world's biggest selling herbicide doubled them for all the GMOs for human consumption because they're having this huge malfunction in the GMO program and that they're creating these super uh, tough resistant weeds that it takes so much more glyphosate now to kill them. So everything in the food system if you're eating GMOs, is going to have more herbicides. And and and, and, and Jim, so people who don't understand, you know, you, you come out with this stuff and you're very passionate about it. The reason we're so anti-GMO is this. is Here's the whole perspective of GMO. And think about the economics for Monsanto and Dow and all these people that do this. Is They want to sell more product, right? There's only so much land. There's only so many farmers. You want to sell more land. So what you do is you can't you can't spray too much Roundup on the on the weeds because then you'll kill the plants too. So what they do is they make a plant that is re, re, has greater resistance to the the pesticide that they want to sell. I'm, I'm I'm being very simplistic, but I think I think at some level we have to start at this level. So now what happens is is if you can make a plant like a corn plant or grain, which are the two greatest uh, 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 victims of this food source right now, if you make it resistant, you can sell more grain to kill more weeds and more bugs. Well, if you saw the consumer report that was last June, it, it said there are more than 20 contaminants in a, a bottle of milk that you pull off the shelf at any of your food stores that you go shopping at in and, and the mass food production line. You get, anti uh, you get um, uh, antibiotics, you get uh, steroids, you get herbicides, pesticides, you get all these things that are being fed to the animal. It, it, it travels through, and the same is true with the corn and the grains and that type of thing. Forget the problems we have with grains being processed and, and uh, uh, glutens and, and all the other things that are going on that are inflammatory to them. That's the aspect of what we're we're dealing with. So, you know, I've gotten to where when, when I go like to Chipotle's or I go to Moe's, 
I never get the corn anymore because even though they tell me it's organically grown, I don't I don't know where they grew it. You know, that might be the, the, the organic classification that we hear about. You really can't depend upon. That's another show for Miranda and, 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 uh, and Mitch to go into. And uh, hopefully Jordan Rubin could join us for that discussion because he's really written a lot about it. Yep, but yeah. and, and we have to understand that there's no testing that goes on. Right, Jim? There's no testing that goes on. They oh, just no. raise the levels, you know. Right, so, and there wasn't a law change or anything. It's just the people at the EPA said we need to help our buddies out with the GMO Monsanto uh, because these crops uh, need more, more, more Roundup. All right. Yeah, unfortunately, it's a money-making business. So. Yeah. so, all right, Miranda, I really appreciate it. Give us the dates again, Jim. Thank you for your input, and, and then we'll go from there. i got about 10 minutes to talk about the exercise component. Oh, absolutely. Um, so seminars, we've got one coming up next month. It's going to be Thursday, August 29th at 7 o'clock at our Ormond Beach location. It's going to be all about the connection between diabetes and heart disease. Um, it will be presented by Aligned Integrative Health. Then coming up in September, we have Leslie Patterson on our store. It'll be uh, Thursday the 19th. She'll be talking about the importance of turmeric, uh, an excellent anti-inflammatory, and then um, iodine, a very essential mineral. And then in October, we are very much looking forward to Dr. Michael Murray coming. Uh, he'll be at Calvary Christian Church on October 3rd at 7. And I'm pretty sure he's going to be talking about um, his new book, which is um, on cholesterol and heart health. Uh, again, we have two store locations, one in Ormond Beach on Williamson Boulevard and one on Taylor Road in Port Orange. And I got it. All right. Thank you very much, Miranda, for joining us today. I appreciate you calling in and taking time out of your schedule. I appreciate Jim's contribution to the show, and um, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Oh, so, yes. Thank you both. All right, Miranda, <laughs> thank you. And I want to talk now a little bit about the exercise component. You know, it is Fitness Friday. We do talk about fitness a lot. But, you know, consider this, Dave. When you look at athletes, okay, and, and you see the marathon runner versus the sprinter, who looks more youthful? Whose body looks better? In 99 out of 100 cases. The sprinter. The sprinter. He looks, he looks more muscle youthful. Tone. More muscle tone. More fuller, right? Okay. Yeah. So, so we have to take that perspective and say, who looks older? The, the marathon runner usually looks older. Yeah. Although we do it for heart health and that type of thing. Well, you know, again, going back into convention and, and going again, a bit against, well, more than a bit against <laughs> convention, but I've been doing this for years. I mean, you, you remember when I used to come in the studio and say, no aerobic exercise, you don't need aerobic exercise, and everybody's a tosser, hates aerobic exercise. I didn't hate aerobic exercise. Because you built it into your uh, circuit I, training. I, I, built, I built it into what we did in our program. I, I, I agree with aerobic metabolism. I agree with the, the contribution. But the way we do aerobic exercise, the way we work to strengthen the, the heart and to burn fat is not the efficient way to spend 30, 40 minutes. You know, uh, Marty, Marty Gage and his wife came in to drop off their magazine. Jan, Orman, Jan Gage came in to drop off Orman Magazine the other day. And, and, and Marty says, uh, I walk all over the place. I, I go, and I said, I know, I see you walking all the time. I said, but, you know, my big, my big change to this is that, you know, if you don't put these components of anti-aging together, the supplementation at some level, the, the, the good eating habits, changing some of those mm -hmm. eating habits, and then the exercise, and the exercise would be efficient. You need the strength training. You know, here's the effect of strength training at a high level, and intensity is the key. And when I say intensity, it doesn't mean we kill you. Intensity is the level that you build yourself to be able to handle. We start people at a very low level, and then we increase their intensity so they can work harder. You want to be progressive. You want to work harder. By the same token, your, your cardiovascular component of it, the high, the high intensity interval training, starts with very short burst starts with a five or six second burst. Some people can't do that when they come in. Hmm. That's why I love having my SciFit machines. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my, my, my girlfriend, she did, she did the burst training and she did 30 seconds because she was on a piece, of, a piece of equipment that wasn't as efficient as the SciFits. Well, you know, when we do, when we do it with the SciFit, it is so efficient at raising your level of intensity of your body. So your body's going to respond to what it can respond to. So we want to take you, and we want to, to, to work you from a standpoint of you have these peaks and valleys of where your heart rate goes up. It goes up very high, and, and people are there going, oh, I do interval training. It's not interval training. It's all-out burst training. It's driving the body to where it goes through the fight-or-flight response, and it causes this 
hormonal response that heals the body faster and allows the body membranes to get stronger. It allows the, the mitochondria to become more efficient. It allows the oxygen to get through more antioxidants to be called upon and more changes to occur in the body and more musculature. Here's the effect. You get on a treadmill, you go to an aerobic class, you're burning that, you're in that low level, you're burning that, that, that fat or that, that calorie that you're burning. You're burning it for the time that you exercise. But when you take high intensity interval, all out burst, and strength training trained in a manner that we train at Bodies Personalized Fitness with the knowledge training principles, what you are doing is you are depleting the cell of its reserve glycogen, and you're depleting the cell and you're stimulating the cell to go through this process where catecholamines are flooding the cell. What happens then is the cell heals itself and becomes stronger, more resistant. You preserve that telomere that we talked about because you're eating right. And then what you do is you begin to, to, to heal the body faster. So now for 36 hours, research is showing us, for 36 hours after your workout, you're still burning fat because you're replenishing those stores that you depleted by virtue of what you did. This is the effect of the exercise program that we use at Bodies. You know, the burst training is something that's come on in the last three years. <clears throat> it's, I, I use burst training because that's the term we hear for mostly. We call, actually call them all outburst and sprints, the two classifications we have. What people do, what they're calling burst training, I would call more of a sprint. We build to where people can do sprints. It's hard to explain to people when we've, we've been for so long inundated with 30 and 40 minutes. Six to 12 minutes is all you need when you complement it to your strength training program. And here's another thing that goes against convention, but listen to the science. All of you that are working out, you go to a fitness center, you get on the treadmill or bike, you ride it for 20 minutes, you go do your strength training. You've just used your, your sugar and your glycogen to a large effect in that 20-minute bout to get to the point where you supposedly burned fat, and you did burn some fat. Okay, <clears throat> the thing about it is, is that what happens is, is that when, when we get you to that point where you do that, now you go do your strength training. What's the strength training you use as a, as a source? Strength training is anaerobic. It's not aerobic. Aerobic just means that you're using oxygen. Well, the strength training, what, what happens is the strength training at that point is that you don't have any blood, you don't have any sugar in your blood, and you don't have enough muscle glycogen because you've used it all. So now you need more. So how do you produce it? You you take your own lean body tissue and you turn it into well through a thing called gluconeogenesis. You turn it into sugar for the body to do that exercise work. You actually destroy the thing you're trying to create by strength training. You're destroying the muscle. That's why you want to train with rest in between you, you don't need to train every day and it's the big thing i've tried to emphasize to the triathletes i train the marathon runners is you the day after you strength train you need that day of rest and i have a young lady training with me for to get into our rotc program she's only been trained two weeks if you saw a before and after picture you'd think it was a 10-week picture really? because in two weeks now we've taken her program is sort of unique we're doing four days a week with her we do a day where she's strong with her burst and cardio training and then the next day is a strength training day with her with her burst afterwards and a day of rest and then we repeat the two-day process her body i saw her the other day i said man look at the muscle tone you've got and and her push-up level how many push-ups she can do for her test has gone up by 30 percent in two wow. weeks so Efficient training, it goes straight to the special that we're running at Bodies Personalized Fitness, the eight-hour body at Bodies by Tossicum, a $99 program, an eight-week program, eight weeks, eight hours of workouts, two or three days a week. You tell me what your schedule is. We'll, we'll, we'll design it like that. It is a program that can enlighten you to what health can do to you and fitness can do to you. The phone number is 672, and I didn't give this number out enough. 672-6464. 672-6464. Bodies, personalized fitness in Ormond Beach. We'd love to be the place that you come to to start where your fitness level is at and get you where you want to be. God bless. Have a great weekend, and we will see you on Fitness Friday next week. Daytona Beach, first in local news. Fox News updates at the top of every hour online at NewsDaytonaBeach.com.